Part 3, DXing Made Easy by Victor Garnczewski, US 5, Whiskey Echo. Oh, so we came to a, a point which deals with operating practices and uh, operator skills. I see a good DX operator as a professional gambler who knows when DX could show up, when DX can change bands. And DX operator studies uh, the DX operator's style of operation and follows it to make that contact he needs. If uh, DXer's setup is small, uh, uh, he listens to the DX position for a day or so to find the most efficient way to make a QSO. Good DX operator uh, never police the DX frequency, never talks on, on a frequency of DX, but listens around, listen to his split frequency, trying to find who, whom the DX, uh, DX work with. Of course, it is necessary for a DXer to use both modes, CW and sideband, and to be able to get his call sign from DX station immediately without repeat there will be no other no, could be no second chance the dx station will go to work somebody else you need to, to respond immediately and there are several techniques that allow us to work as many countries zones uh, counties islands uh, as we wish so the random DX is a kind of a general general DX and you listen on the bands, you look at the cluster, you see the station trying to call him on, on his frequency in a pilot. This of course uh, requires a lot of time and DX cluster. The expedition recently using the split operation which uh, allows them to listen in kind of a portion of the band and uh, you need to find the method the DX station works. Either he listens from beginning of the portion of the band to the top or or the other way. How 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 is he works and uh, this will help you to adopt and uh, find the spot where he will hear you and actually make a contact. And another thing I want to pay your attention is uh, actually the other side of the pileup. If the X operator is good, he, he is adapting himself to the pileup. If the pileup is very big, he starts to work by numbers. But if the DX operator is bad, uh, there will be a zoo on his frequency and the operation will be spoiled. It is the worst situation. You can arrange a sked with the extension to to work him it could be done by email or just to send an announcement uh, on a dx cluster uh, it was very popular method of working dx uh, when i started that in late 60s and 70s but looks like uh, th this method is not used uh, very frequently anymore uh, another quite controversial uh, technique is dxnet well, uh, they were very popular in the 80s and even 90s, but lately they are mostly on 80 meters now. We're very strong and uh, good DX, uh, European or, well, control station. Oh, let, let. You can arrange a sked with DX station by email or sending an announcement to, to a DX cluster. That's quite efficient, the method, if uh, actually the DX station has the DX cluster. And uh, the contro a controversial uh, technique is uh, working DX in DXnet. Uh, also, I have nothing against this uh, in case that the uh, DXnet uh, uh, control station has... Uh, the ability uh, to control it and uh, provide the quality service. Um, everyone uh, in our generation remembers Jim, Jim Smith P29JS, VK9NS, uh, who 
was a control, a net control for Pacific DXNet, which was uh, for me is a kind of an example of excellent DXNet operation. So if you get, have a chance to work at DX, a new country in DXNet, do it. So, and now the equipment. Uh, equipment is available, so you need to, uh, you need to make your own choice on on a transceiver you want to use. But remember the rule by V3GK: you need to have at least 17 dB over transceiver and dipole. So transceiver, linear, and uh, resonant directional antenna. Those that I've been talking about uh, give you the desired 70 dBs and uh, allow to work DX. Uh, absolutely necessary is to have a DX cluster connection. It, it could be done by packet radio on VHF or via internet. Without DX cluster, DXing these days is not possible. It is very inefficient. Uh, you also need to have a logging program that enables uh, control of the transceiver and uh, also DX cluster connection. This uh, saves a lot of time. It is very efficient. I recommend using four windows TR4W, which is a free software written by a, a Russian programmer. It can be downloaded from uh, internet. Uh, T uh, original TR log uh, by N6TR works uh, well under DOS and the DOS emulator in Linux. I'm using both these programs and never had any problem with that. And finally, to work a DX, to work a new country, you need some luck. But the luck comes when all the requirements I've been talking about before are met. Good DX. Well, I hope that you've been interested in uh, listening to this information regarding DXing. That uh, one day I'll hear you in a pileup calling a rare DX. And uh, using this opportunity, I want to thank FAIRS, uh, which provided uh, equipment for the packet radio network, which enabled us to put a cluster network in Ukraine and the hope uh, that uh, we will be able to help you more and uh, you will enjoy DXing. It's, it's fun. It's uh, ecstasy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for watching the LCL School video, DXing Made Easy by Victor Gonchowski, US5 Whiskey Echo. Victor and his wife Helen are founding members of the Foundation for Amateur International Radio Service, and they were part of our delegation to the Dayton Hamvention, and we're so pleased that the Dayton Amateur Radio Club, again this year for the third year, awarded a grant to the Foundation for continuing using amateur radio to develop international goodwill.